Hello students. So the last class we learned uh, introduction to computers and let us learn today the functional component of computers and also we learn uh, the evolution, the earlier computing devices which are the calculating devices earlier were using and to try to learn about the generations of computers. The functional components of computer, so I think already I have told about what is computer. So computer is an electronic device which accept data and instructions and according to the instruction it process on the data and produce the output required. So this is how the computer works. This is how we, what I have seen with the computers. So to do this, that is to accept data, we need some unit to perform some calculations. We need unit, some devices to store data and instruction temporarily and permanently, permanently we need some unit. And also after the result has been generated, that has to be displayed. So there also we have a units. Therefore, that's, we have a different type. So you can see here, the basically computer is supposed to carry out the following of functions. So now already I have told, so it accept data and instruction as an input. So both has to be provided. The next, it stores the data. So that's a mem stores the data as well as the program and retrieves as and when it is required. So it's kept and whenever it is needed, data and instruction, it will be able to retrieve, access back again. And process the data, that's what we provided, as per the instruction that's also given as an input, given by the program and convert it to useful information. So that is what it is, it will do. Next is communicate the information as an output. That's the final result has to be communicated. So it accepts data and instruction, that's a program as an input, stores the data, program both and retrieves as and when it is required process the data as per the instruction given by the program and convert into useful information. Then communicate the information as an output. So this is the a typical uh, functions or operation that has to be performed in order to use the computers. Let us learn with uh, what are the uh, units we may be using and we learn one by one. So based on the uh, functionalities of computer, the hardware component is classified into four main units. One is the input unit, which you are familiar with already, and also processing unit, you already know this, all these things, and also the memory unit, and one more is we have a output unit. So these are the things, uh, uh, four major units. When, whenever we talk about computer means, so we have four units. One is input unit, another is a processing unit, uh, there is a memory unit and finally we have a output unit. So now, so these units already I have told interconnected by elect electrical wires to permit communication between them. So what actually it does means, so it is used to communicate. So how they are communicating means we have seen some electrical wires. So they permit the communication of among the various units, these four units. So you can see the arrow diagrams. These arrows in the diagram shows how data will be moving. So from the input device, it goes here to the primary memory and it's controlling it, it goes back again, comes and we have arithmetical logical unit and central processing. So this is how the electrical connections, how they are able to communicate with, it, with the four major unit, that is, input unit, processing unit, memory unit, and output unit. So let us learn one by one. So one, you know, what is the input device and what are the input unit? So an input device is any hardware uh, component that allows you to enter data and instruction into a computers. Some of the widely used input devices are the keyboard, mouse, microphone, scanner, and webcam. So these are the input devices. So normally computer works means so we need to provide data and instruction. So how these data and instructions are provided means using uh, some hardware devices. We have a, in, we call them as a input devices. Most commonly you have seen keyboard. Every computers you have seen keyboard and also the mouse. And also now we can see a scanners nowadays, a microphone and webcam also nowadays we started using. 
So, what these input devices they have they have contain electrical circuit they convert into digital form which can be understood by the computer that is we have an input unit. So, this input unit consisting of circuit in other words it links the external world to the computer. So, whatever we have what human understandable form will be converted into machine understandable form then it will be transferred to the computer that is why we connect to the cables. What these cables means? They are sent in the form of high or low voltage electrical connections, some are mechanical. So, they will be sending data in the form of zeros and ones. So, that is why we have a uh, keyboard, we have a mouse, we have a microphone, scanner. So, these are used to link external world to the computers through which we are able to provide data and instructions to the computers. So, next one we have a central processing unit. So, this part is we are discussing now we are discussing is this one the central processing unit I think most of you familiar with. So, central processing is the main part of the computer. So, it is one of the important like brain of human how we function how we work means because of our brain. Similarly, we have a microprocessor which is we call as a central processing unit that is we have a, a processor which is responsible for performing all the operation that what is going to happen in a computer. So, normally what happens means there will consist of CPU consisting of many components. So, what are the components it is consisting of means it has the control units, it has the arithmetical logical unit and also it has a specific and general purpose registers. So, all these components together we call it as a central processing unit. It does all the tasks. So, all the calculation whatever we do with computers. So, it is used that is processor only. So, with the alpha processor we can perform wide variety of operations to assist them we have other components like ALU, arithmetic logical unit, control unit, controls and coordinates we learn all these things. So, so what is uh, CPU mean? CPU is a part of the computer that carry out the instruction of computer program. So, whatever the instruction that will be executed. It is the unit that reads and execute, executes program instruction. Hence, it is known as the brain of computers. So, being a technical we are not supposed to say but still you can understand it is like a brain of computers. So, it does all the tasks. So, it takes all the major decisions and makes all sort of calculation and directs the different parts of the computer function by activating and controlling the operations. Activating and controlling the operation everything like how we are controlled by brain like even walking you know speaking something in your hand, using your hand, using legs, whatever we do all will be controlled and directed by the brain. In exactly similar way the computer CPU, the processor will does all those things. Maybe leg does it, its task, hand does its task, you know eyes will do its task and you know every components functions but they are coordinated, they are controlled when to run, when to uh, you know all those things is monitored by the brain in exactly similar way this processor will does. So, in inside computers whether it is calculation, whether it is a moving of data from one component to another component, whether you are displaying the result or you know ex execution of the program is complete, do not accept data, this is not a valid data something like all this all the calculation has to be performed by the central processing unit that is the CPU. So, the CPU to do all these things it consisting of arithmetic logical units one of the most important component and then control unit second one very important and also we have a internal memory they are called as a registers. So, there are six registers and also we have a general purpose six registers and also we have specific uh, purpose registers. CPU controls and coordinate all the actions of the entire system it is like a director it monitors everything the flow of data and processing of the data again the flowing the data to the memory from the memory it is accepting fetching again and doing calculation sending all the instruction to you know activating. So, now we asking input devices to send data and after the calculation is over again it is sending the result has been generated and result is sent to the secondary memory and if you want the output again the data from the secondary memory it is um, come to the main memory from the main memory it is moved on to the display devices it will displaying or it may be output devices it may be printing. So, all this entire operations all the things is controlled by the CPU. The programs software provide the CPU a set of instruction to follow and perform the specific task and communicate between two or more components of the computer system. 
So there is a pathway. So to establish a connection between the various components, there should be some path, there should be some connection. That is called as a bus. So bus is a, a, a collection of wires which carries electrical signal from one component to another component. You can see, so these are all buses. You can think like this is a bus, this also a bus, this also a bus, where data is moving from one component to other components. Within this also we have some or internal bus, there are some which are external bus. So we are just learning about bus because how they are communicating means they are communicating through the wires. So those wires are nothing but bus, we call this communication pathway. So which allows the data transfer between them, all this data, how they move with it is through the buses. The CPU consisting of storage, here we can discuss storage, uh, we call it as a memory unit, already we discussed and also arithmetic logical unit and control unit. So let us learn about the memory unit one by one we'll go with. So memory unit, so memory unit is also known as the primary memory or main memory of the computer, that is a RAM. So we might have remember whenever you go and purchase, a, you'll get, uh, you know, memory RAM. So what is the RAM size that is, that decides how fast your computer is. This is the main memory of the computer. So it stores data, programs, instruction, and internal results and the final output temporarily before it is sent for appropriate output device. So what is this? Why do we need this internal or main memory means? So, so this stores the data and instructions which are currently executed by the program. So during the executions, there may be some intermediate results or internal results are generated that also we store and the final result is also obtained. They will be stored temporarily as until it is displayed on the screen before it is sent to the appropriate output devices. So it will be retaining. So that is what we call as a primary or main memory that is indirectly. So that the data and instruction which is currently executed or needed by the CPU must be kept in somewhere. Where do you keep means that is kept on the primary memory. That is what we call as a random RAM, random access memory. So it consisting of thousands of cells called storage location. That is how it is RAM, we'll learn in detail uh, next year, okay. So these cells activates in the form of zeros and ones. So everything it will be in the form of zeros and ones. So these bits are used to store instruction and data by their combinations. So we have a data means it is in the form of zeros and ones. Again, you have an instruction means it's also in the combination of zeros and the main memory holds the data and program only Temporarily, that's why it's called volatile memory. What is volatile means? They'll be retaining data and information as long as the power supply is on. Once the power supply go off, they lose the content. They are called volatile. Volatile means as long as power is there, they'll be retaining. Once power goes, they'll be losing. So that's something about the world, what is volatile memory. And non-volatile means they'll be retaining data even the power supply goes off, like secondary storage devices. So another important component in the CPU is the arithmetic logical unit. ALU we call, so uh, as the name suggests, arithmetical and logical operations are carried out using this uh, unit. So ALU is a unit where all arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, all the calculation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and one more we have uh, another is a logical operation. So we'll be learning what is AND operation, OR operation, and NOT operation. So they are performed with the non-numeric data they result normally in the form of true or false. You'll learn later on what is this uh, and or operators, the logical of logical functions. Once data are fed into the mem main memory, once data comes to the main memory from the input devices, so they are held and transferred as needed to the ALU where processing takes place. So first it stores in the input, input devices, through the input devices it goes to the memory devices, so in RAM it will be holding. So when there is a necessity of performing calculation, so this will be transferred to the ALU, arithmetic logical units, and for where the processing takes place, no process occurs in the primary storage. So in RAM, there is no calculation, nothing will be performed. It is only storage unit, stores. So immediately generated results. What it does means uh, during the calculation, immediately results will be generated. So ALU, it, it is uh, stored temporarily in the memory unit until needed at a later time. So now what happens means whenever you're doing some calculation, some intermediate results are generated. So these intermediate results has to be kept in the temporarily in the memory unit until we use them again. So that has to be kept somewhere. So data 
may move from primary memory to the ALU and back again to many times before the process is finalized. What happens means, so there is a, uh, many times there is a data movement between the primary memory and arithmetic logical unit because sometimes arithmetic logical cannot store. It does the calculation during the calculation, it, uh, some results are obtained so that result, intermediate results will be transferred back to the primary memories. Again it is needed means again it is fetched. So before the final result is obtained, there is a many times there is a data flow, there is a data movement between the primary memory and the arithmetic logical unit. So next is we have a control unit. So control unit as the name suggests controls and coordinates the entire operation of the system. So it acts as central nervous system. So it ensures that the information is stored correctly and program instructions are followed in a proper sequence as well as the data are selected from memory as necessary. It also coordinates all the input and output devices of a computer system. Control unit controls all the hardware operation that is those input units, output units, memory units and the processor. So now normally you know that how do you know that computer the execution is over? How do we know that this is the only data has to be accepted? So the, how computer can perform all this some, some logical steps you may think. How it is performed means because of control unit. How does computer knows that accepting input data is over? So now we are fetching only, there are in computer memory, there are so many things. So what is needed only you are picking, not everything. So and you are performing the calculation in the proper order, one by one. This is the first one, this is the second instruction, this is the third instruction. How it is done means that is because of the presence of control units. So control unit controls and coordinate the entire operation of the system. Everything is controlled and monitored. All the hardware components, a movement of data between the input devices, output devices, memory units, all will be controlled, all will be monitored by the control unit. That's the role of control unit. So all has to work together. Then only we can get the final result. Without That's why computer can do so many things means because the, these components are assisting, these components are performing their task as a one unit. That's why we can see computer, when you type input, it accepts only what is necessary. We provide more, it will not accept because that is the control unit is monitoring inside. So only these two is needed. Once it's over, automatically switch on to the memory unit. So from the memory, what is data instruction is there? It fetches only those data and those instruction and perform again transfer this is arithmetic logical unit and sending the finally the output. So all hardware uh, communication is monitored or controlled by the control unit. So next one we have a storage unit. So once the result has been obtained, so after processing, will be in the primary memory. As I told, it's a volatile memory it, it, and also its size capacity will be less. So once the final result is obtained, so that will be stored in the primary memory. So these data or information can be stored on the storage devices or they are called secondary memory. Secondary storage devices are called, also, also called as the auxiliary memory devices. So secondary storage devices can hold more storage data than the main memory and they are very less expensive. They are used from magnetic device, magnetic storage devices. And these results or information can be uh, copies to any storage media used in the future. So that is how we are going to store. That's the role of secondary storage unit. And one more most important is the output devices. So an output device is in a hardware that's normally, uh, it is like opposite of input device. So input devi uh, devices or input unit links the external world to the computer. This output unit or output devices links the computer to the external world. So what actually normally the output produced will be in the form of digital signals, in the form of electrical signals. And these devices will have a circuit, they'll be converting into human readable form or human understandable form. So that's why we have a display devices, we have a printer, and we have a speaker. So these are the, output, there are many output devices. Basically, we whenever we talk about output devices means we have, uh, most commonly is, uh, everyone is familiar and printer is also familiar and speakers, uh, whereas music, everyone listening, all those things, it comes as an output device. So it come from the computer to the external, they are called output units. So these are the things is essential in order to perform any operations required by the uh, computers. Normally what happens, you want to do some operations with computer means there is an input unit, there is a processing unit, in turn it consisting of ALU, automatic logical unit, and also it is consisting of control unit, and also it has a memory unit. 
So and we have a secondary storage unit as well. And we have a, one more is the output units. So these has to work together in order to perform. In order to computer means these are all interconnected. They are like unity in diversity. There are many things, many different components. They are put together to perform as a one unit. So that is what computer means. I think you are getting some idea about how these, how computer can perform all this task. How like human, the computer can also do means because for each task, a specific purposes, we have a devices, we have a units. So they are responsible for, to carry out these operations so that the computer performs like humans. Like how we perform some, you know, some task, like exactly similar way, we have a units. I do not want to compare right now. Let it be, you know, as you learn again, you'll understand future don't worry just you follow with what I'm saying there's also some units like whenever we have to take food means we use hand so it's like input unit we'll take from hand and it is pro so this hand is like input device like keyboard we provide we type something means it goes to the computer where it goes so when it, we hit food means from this you know esophagus it goes inside stomach so there is some process takes place exactly similar way here also the computer we have an input unit where we providing data and instructions instead of food we provide data because inside uh, we you know human body is different and inside computer is different there it works with only data and instruction that's why we are providing data and instruction don't take too much comparison but still it's exactly similar way so that's how it is a computer just you can understand different units different parts of computers work together therefore we can perform the operations any operation required by the user so now let us learn about the evolution of computers. Just in this case, uh, don't uh, learn too much in this. This only they were asking for one mark, who invented. It is like a history. And they do not ask how it is functioning. It's all like, you know, outdated. We are not using. But still, we should know that how this uh, human evolution takes place, how we started counting, and what are the devices we have used. And then we today is what is available. That's like evolution of computers. So evolution of man and mankind has helped to invent a calculating tool. Early man used stones for calculation purpose. We using stones, sticks, fingers, pebbles, and then, uh, then we cover is to count. And later on what happens? And even today we are calculating using our fingers. And whenever asked something like your you know, the way the mathematics you have learned in the primary schools, uh, you know, 10 in the mind, 2 in a 4, something you make calculation. Fingers, still we count the limitation. But the problem is the limitation of, you know, only 10 fingers and 10 toes. You know, these are the, you know, they just try to understand, they are explaining. And tool for calculation, every uh, civilization have contributed calculating tool in their own methods or de uh, designs. So mechanical counting devices were made, uh, we'll discuss one by one. So actually what happens as the evolution takes place, there are different, actually normally what happens when humans started counting, so you started using a fingers. So when fingers are not sufficient, we can have only 10 fingers, and you use the toes. So toes are not sufficient, then you started counting, making group of uh, stones, pebbles sometimes, and use, using sticks and bundle them together, counting. This is. 10, this is 20, this is 100, something like this. And then uh, as the civilization take uh, place, so each one started producing their own mechanical devices. And today we can see one by one. Today, even today, Abacus, uh, which are very familiar with uh, most of you, uh, maybe in the lower academics you might have studied in first hand and second, at least introduction to Abacus. So Abacus is the first known calculating machine used for counting. So it's the first calculating device used for counting. So it is it is a made up of beads. You can see here we have a beads here. It's a made up of beads, uh, st uh, strung on cards. You can see this strung there on the cards, and used simple arithmetic calculation. They are used to perform simple arithmetic calculation. So these cards corresponds to the decimal uh, positions. For example, this is unit place. This is tenth place. This is 100 place, this is 1000 place, like this. So positions of digits. We have a unit place, 10 power 0. We have 10th place, 10 power 1. We have 10 square, which is 100. And 10 power 3, which is 1000. 10 power 4, uh, 10,000. 10 power 5, lakhs. 
exactly these will be representing that is uh, positions of the digits and they are representing the beats or nothing but the digits and beats represents a digit like 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we have unit 4. Here also 4 means 1, 2, 3, 4. So, total is 44. So, we have a 10 4 times and 4 4 times. So, 40 plus 4 44. The example I am giving. So, this is how this abacus used to represent numbers, the values. And the numbers are represented by beats uh, close to the crossword. So, you can see here the number close to the cross. This is a crossbar we call, a close to the crossbar that we call as a, this is heaven and this is earth, we generally they are used. Abacus is mainly used for addition, so addition, subtraction and later on for division and also multiplication. But abacus earlier it is used for the calculation, just you move this one 10 times, this also you move, so then corresponding you subtract, add, that is how it is able to perform, first to 4. Then 2 means again 24. So we have 10, we have 2, count again. And then they are shifted 1 bit high, 1 bit low. That is how it is depending on the moment. So we have a 10 in every place. So 10 is moved. After 10, we cannot. So then you have to move 1. So it becomes uh, totally 9 beats will be there. Then 1. So every, that's how they are able to perform. Any of that's earlier they are using. And then multiplication. They also use successive subtraction, successive addition is a multiplication. Later on, they started using division for division also. The reason for studying this abacus, even today com complex calculations which are performed by advanced computers are also calculated using abacus. So even you can verify. So whatever the complex calculation you are performing, so using this abacus also, you can perform verify. Still, that's why it's we may be using sometimes. No, no. But you can, ver for verification purpose, you can use sometimes how this computer can calculate. Similar way, this device could also be used for the calculation, which is the first calculating device means one mark they may be asking, you have to learn Abacus. Abacus is the first calculating device invented by the mankind. Or just what is the first early calculating devices, just you name them, mention them, that's enough. So we have one more is called Napier, bon Napier Bones. This is mainly used for multiplications. So what actually it does means uh, Napier bones were invented by John Napier, a Scottish, that's a Scotland, Scottish, a Scottish a mathematician, a mathematician as an aid to the multiplication. He wanted to multiply means a larger number. It was very, abacus is not possible, so it's quite complicated. So he come up with this, um, uh, what he called Napier bones. So this, it could be uh, helping for multiplication. A set of bones consisted of nine rods, one for each digit. 1 through 9 and constant rod for the digit 0. A rod is similar to the one column of multiplication table. You can see here, so like this we had all like 1 bones will be there. So digit all, they will be at 4, 4, not same. So it's like 1, 2, 3 up to 9. So whenever we have to multiply means, so those number of like 4 digits we have to multiply like 4, 46. We have to keep only these 3. Okay. And here also there will be odd, so corresponding 1, 2, 3 will be here, like this one we keep here. So 446 into 3 means the corresponding row, we, here we have to take. So this one, so here we we, we add them, so 2, uh, two plus 3, 6, uh, 6 plus 6, uh, so 7, 7, 7, uh, 6, 5, something like this. If you multiply 446 into some 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 times means, uh, 4 times means some 776 something you are getting. So that is how this Napier bone used for multiplication. Any 4, 5 digit, four, 6 digit, 3 digits you can multiply. So this is something about earlier they are using Napier bones. So they just remember who invented, John Napier invented Napier bones. It's also used for multiplication. So which device used for a multiplication? Who invented? Maybe such question may be asking from this chapter. This is quite boring. Just you follow this, just you read them, that's enough. Just name, names are important, who invented and which is the device. Like Abacus, first calculating device and Napier bones and it is a multiplication device and it is invented by, uh, we can have a John Napier, uh, is a Scottish mathematician. Okay. So next we have a, a slide rule, so one more device. A slide rule was invented by William Otterd. So it is uh, based on the principle 
that actual distance from starting point of the room is directly proportional to the logarithmic of number printed on the the rule normally what happens means we have a logarithmic value here you can see here the logarithmic value from one point to another point we have like this so we have from here to here so so the slide the slide rule is embedded by two sets of uh, scales or joined together you can see here one one scale here you can see here with the some distance between so we have another here another scale so there is some gap in between them so there is a uh, this two set of scales that are joined together with the marginal space there is some space in between you can see here this is space okay you can see from here it doesn't okay that space uh, between them so a suitable a technique alliances of two scales enable to slide to perform you can move from here to here like this so you can move this so when this uh, to perform multiplication and division so we are using method of addition and subtraction so that is a successive same thing you repeated here and also here three times four times so successive addition is nothing but a multiplication successive subtraction is nothing but a uh, division so it can perform uh, multiplication and division this is also one or another type of device used for calculating and next we have a, a pascaline machine or adding machine so this a blaze pascal who actually invented this the rotating wheel calculator was it's also known as a rotating wheel calculator so developed by a french philosopher that's a blaze pascal so he invented the first mechanical calculator in 1641 the date is not important but this mecha first mechanical calculator who invented that's a blaze pascal it was named as a pascalin is the name and it had a, a box like this you can see here it had a box with the eight movable dials you can see here like this you can move one two three something like this so more one two three four five six they have shown many but so we have eight dials like earlier telephone uh, we have dial so same thing so it had a uh, eight movable wheel it's called dials the numbers for calculations were entered with the dial so we want to three means three times we have to repeat one two three then three will be stored here you want five for another calculation like input one two three four five this five is entered then you can perform the calculation so it could add it can perform addition it can perform subtraction it can divide and also it can multiply the numbers as big as thousand till thousand you can perform this addition subtraction multiplication it was using a simple component such as the gears and levers successive so we have a gear and lever means same thing you repeat three times so it is like multiplying so 3 into 6 means so add 6 three times so that is a gear and levers in the same gear we repeat that is using that technique it is able to perform addition subtraction multiplication and this was this is a, a predecessor to today electronic calculators so we were today's electronic calculator and it has this almost same this earlier it was this one so the we inspired and we designed today's calculator he was inspired by the computation work of his father's job and he devised the model so he was only 19 years old when he devised this model so like your age maybe one year so he was invented this one by you know seeing his father's work by observing what he was doing and he modified and this can perform this addition subtraction multiplication so next we have one more device i think you feel very boring this class um, you can't do it you know regular class means could have you know interesting but uh, still what we you know you can just you know as an examination point of view it's not much important but still you go with the the devices just you are familiar with so these are the devices existed earlier now we use today's most sophisticated you know scientific calculator mobile got everything most of these are calculator everything calc uh, computers all this can be found but anyhow just we, next we have a libniz calculator uh, mathematician gottfried libniz uh, built a calculator 
that could add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers. And it's also one more device, Leibniz calculator. And we have a one more is called Jackwards loom. In 1801, Joseph Mary Jackwards, so the names are very important, remember this, invented the powered loom that is used uh, punched wooden cards to automatically weave incredible detail patterns including pictures and text. So this can be taken as the first read-only memory device. So this jackwood loom can, you know, on a wooden like this, it can, can write patterns. Sometimes a text or maybe pictures or numbers could also be automatically it is printed. It can be worn. So that is here it can weave that. So this detailed pattern can be generated. And that's why it's like just, just a read-only memory. You can read whatever you cannot modify. It's like printed. You can just keep seeing what what actually it is. It has been displayed. What has what has been typed earlier? Like that's a read-only memory. The code loom it was used. So next comes Charles Babbage, who is I think everyone is familiar with, who is the father of modern computer means. Who the answer is uh, Charles Babbage. So he invented the difference engine, which has all the features which is a modern computer has. That's why he is called as a father of modern computers. And look at this was the image, how it was look, analytical engine or difference engine. And today we have a computers formed of very compact, very small. So Charles Babbage, a British mathematician and engineer, designed an automatic calculating machine in 1822. He called it as a difference engine. So later he thought of a mechanical construction which was known as a mechanical digital computer. Babbage called this as an analytical engine. This analytical engine consists of five units which can be the basic principle of the development of modern computer. Hence Charles Babbage is called as, rightly called as the father of computers. So maybe you avoid Charles Babbage what he invented, difference engine, and then we modified this different engine, so we call it as an analytical engine. So automatically, which can perform, which has a five units, today's modern computer. That's why it's called as a father of modern computers. Next, we have a first programmer. So Lady Ada Lovelace, so a, a mathematician, and a genius came to a light most strikingly in her work with the Charles Babbage. She is an assistant working with Babbage, and she come up with a first, uh, you know, what we call a female programmer. So he come up writing instruction to carry out some task. And herself, she called as a analyst or something like she called herself. So pathway into process of designing the first mechanical computer, that's analytical engine. She started writing the first computer algorithm, that's instruction. And she predicted that the later computers will have the ability to do more than the mathematical calculation. What she predicted today, what we have seen, they said, Absolutely true. So Lovelace realized that the analytical engine was in essence a machine for a manipulating a symbols and music notation. Earlier they were used for manipulation of symbols and also for music notations. Ada called herself as an analyst. Today we use it. We have software engineers. I'm an analyst. I'm, analyst. I'm a designer. I'm a testing um, maintenance part. So something like metaphysicians she called herself. So that is where, uh, you know, the f who is the first female programmer, who is the first programmer, they may be asking, that is Lady Ada Lovelace. So she first wrote instruction for the machines, how to, like programs, how do we do. Next we have a polyrith tabulating machines. In 1889, an American named Arman Olirath invented the counting machine to count the population of USA. This electronic machine is able to read the information on the punched cards, it can read and process it electronically. It was one of the main electronic counting devices. It was based on punched cards. So we have a punched cards means so you can give it to this. So this automatically read the contents and it can perform the calculation. So this Herman Olerath was the founder of the company called International Business Machines, IBM. Today's IBM. He was the, actually the founder of that company. So next we have a generations of computers. So this class we have understood what is the components of computers and, and which are the early calculating devices. 
So, next class we are going to learn about generation of CPU. What is first generation? Which are the electronic components they use and what is the programming language? What is the memory? What is the input output devices? We learn all those things with the different generations. Okay, we will continue in the next class. I think this class is boring. Try, try to in this chapter learn the typical diagram, the organization of computer that is this diagram. You write the notes. So, very important. Sometimes they might ask you have textbook means just you read and write. Only definitions are important in the chapter. Who invented, what he invented, something like this. So, this is very important. This is a typical uh, organization of computers, they may ask. So, briefly explain the organization of computers with the neat diagram. This diagram we have to write and then we have to explain one by what is the input unit, what is central processing unit, what it is consisting of, what is the memory unit or storage unit and then what is primary, secondary memory, then output unit. So, all it has to be explained. It's sometimes they ask more ask for 5 marks and remaining is calculating device mention any abacus napier bone and then you have this abacus napier bones then you have a sliding uh, the slide rule calipers and then we have a pascaline adding machine also known as who invented and then we have a pascaline or what do you call analytical link what you call sorry first electronic calculator and then we have a Leibniz calculator then we have a Jacquard loom and then we have a Charles Babbage, the analytical engine and differential difference engine. So, he called and then he is called as a father of computers and Lady Ada Lovelace who is working as assistant to the Charles Babbage come up with the instruction for the machines. That is why she became the first female programmer. That is important. Herman Oliver, the tabulating machine who founded IBM, International Business Machines. So, these are the things we have to be kept in mind for this class. I hope uh, quite boring these classes. Just read them. That is for knowledge based. These are the things just you follow. If it is not understood, just remember, you know, let me know that uh, in the one, once the regular classes starts, we may repeat some things. Okay. Thank you.